juice. Here's Pereira. On the counter, shot, score! For the first time since their inaugural season of 2019, Utica City FC is back in the playoffs and they get set to face the Kansas City Comets tonight. Fans are starting to pack the Adirondack Bank Center in downtown Utica. It's a must win game. Tonight is the night for Utica City FC, the team's first playoff game in three years against the Kansas City Comets. Tonight's game is a winner take all for the chance to take on the division's top seed, Milwaukee, in a best of three. It may be sunny and spring like outside, but inside the Adirondack Bank Center, it's supposed to be whiteout conditions. It's the Eastern Conference play-in game tonight. Fifth seeded Kansas City at fourth seeded Utica. Gerson behind the ball, ready to kick it off. Kansas City finds some more, and it's 3 nothing. KC. Off the rebound, Bond plays it to the box.
And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Eastern Conference Semifinals, Game 2 in the Ron Newman Cup Playoffs. Top-seeded Milwaukee at fourth-seeded Utica. Milwaukee leads the series one game to zero. The MASL is proud to welcome you to MASL Soccer on Twitch. Send us a message in the chat, and we might read it live on air during this afternoon's broadcast. Our coverage today presented in part by Alt Sports Data. They're the official sports data partner of the Major Arena Soccer League. Alt Sports is a San Diego-based leader in trading and consumer data for action, alternative, and emerging sports. By SI Tix. Want to see a game live? Visit Sports Illustrated Tickets for the best tickets to see the MASL action in your favorite arenas. Now with no fees at checkout. Quintas. App, card, wallet. Quintas has everything you need to manage your money your way. Visit Quintas.com today to learn more. And by the MASL Pro Player Combine. If you think you have what it takes to play in the MASL, sign up now to be on the mailing list for the 2023 MASL Pro Player Combine. Visit MASLsoccer.com for more information. Let's send it downstairs for our player introductions. And now, here is your Utica City FC squad, starting with today's reserves. Number eight, Christian Sakara. Number 14, Isak Solmo. Number 15, Cesar Correa. Number 21, Darren Toby. Number 24, Q Quentin Swift. Number 25, Brian Wilkin. Number 26, Steven Fernandez. Number 30, Juan Olava. Number 6, Taylor Walter Bond. And number 70, Nilton Andrade. And now here are today's starters. Half forward, number 3, Gordy Gerson. In the midfield, number four, co-captain, Nate Bordeaux. On defense, number nine, Dylan Hindelt. Also on defense, number 10, Stefan Miatovich. Half forward, number 13, co-captain, Bo Hielovitz. And in goal, number 22, Andrew Coughlin. The head coach of Utica City FC is Everton Morera. as we honor our great nation with the playing of our national anthem, performed today by the Paris Hill Brass.
picture perfect day outside certainly has some fans wishing this game was outdoors but instead They've decided to pack it in and explore the great indoors. It's game two of the Ron Newman Cup playoffs Eastern Conference semifinals. The Milwaukee Wave and Utica City FC. Milwaukee leads the series one game to zero. Hi everybody, I'm Ray Biggs. Glad to have you along for the ride in what should be an epic, thrilling, and tremendous match here this afternoon. Game one went the way of Milwaukee by an 11 to eight margin. And leading the way for the wave was Marcio Leite with two goals and four assists. He had an absolutely seismic performance for the wave. Hoffman and Lawal finished with two goals and an assist apiece. Two three-goal bursts for the wave leading their way forward. Utica City led by Taylor Walter Bondigal and two assists. Gordy Gerson had a pair of tallies as well. And of course Utica playing their third playoff game. They opened with a play-in round on Monday in this very building. An overtime winner from Christian Segura capping off a hat trick. An absolutely epic goal. If you haven't found a way to see it by now, do so. 7-6 was the final score. Bo Yelovitz, a player to watch today for the city. He has a goal in both playoff games. Well of course Marcio Leite with a huge performance to open their playoff account in Milwaukee. Another guy to keep an eye on today, Ian Bennett. He had just an assist in the first game. And the next point, minus the All-Star game for Ian Bennett, the next point he receives will be his 500th in all MASL competitions between the regular season and playoffs, sitting at 499, entering this one today. If you include the All-Star game point that he had, he's at 500 even. The City, fourth seed in the playoffs, 13 wins in the regular season. The Wave, 15 wins to earn the top seed. And the winner will take on Baltimore. The winner of the series will take on Baltimore anyway. This is game two. It is effectively a three-leg series. A home-and-home -home plus a 15-minute minigame, which would follow this if Utica City is victorious. This place is rocking. The Wave try to close out the series. Utica trying to get to the minigame. Huffman to the ball. Our goalkeepers, William Bonahene for the Wave. Coughlin for Utica. And let's get it going. Knifed up the right wing, the Wave in possession. Super Mario, Mario Alvarez with a touch here, plays it down the right wing. Steinwasher returns it. He had a great start to his playoffs, or his brother did, rather. Two goals in the opener for Javier Steinwasher, of course. That was Alex. Bo had it caught behind his heel on the counterattack. Quickly recovered by the Wave. Bennett, left wing, shooting wide. Comes back to Huffman, having a career season, and his shot is fought off by Coughlin. And cleared down to the Wave zone. Just past 45 seconds elapsed. We come up on a minute play. Great goalkeeping to start by Andrew Coughlin. As we get a look on the picture-in-picture -picture replay, Bradley, who played all 24 regular season games for the Wave, fires the shot wide, hunted down on the half boards by Yelovitz, and knocked back to center the former Utica man, Ben Raymond, hunting the ball down there. Down the right side, Miatovich. Pressured by Stuart Grable. Just one goal this season for Grable. He scored it at St. Louis. Collision at the central area. Lawal together with Taylor Walter Bond. It will be against Utica. Delay of game warning has been issued to the city. Redirected by Soma. And Willie B beats him to the ball and clears it to center. By the way, Willie B in the playoff opener, the series opener for the way, playing his first playoff game ever. And made nine saves. Opportunity in front. Oliveira turned away by Coughlin. Luan looking for... 
Another point on his account, but is denied by Coughlin there. He had a game winner in game one. Soma back to Wanalava, who had a goal in the play-in game against Kansas City. Hauled up along the entry line. Reversed back by Fernandez through Miatovic. Segura, the hero of the play-in game. Knocked off his feet as Fernandez lets the shot go. Free kick opportunity for Utica. It'll be teed up just inside the third line of Milwaukee. Utica averaging seven and a half goals a game through two matches in the playoffs. Five and a half in the regular season. Miatovic sends a cutter through the box. Recovered far corner. Cutis Lawal, who had a huge game in the playoff opener for the Wave. Got a touch on it there. And now chipped back in the left wing corner. Fernandez in there battling with Leite. And the whistle sounds allowed to bring play to a halt with 12. 12 to go in the opening quarter. And Utica City will get positioned here with the top of the box. Bond, Segura stacked to the left behind the ball. Bond slants over, Miatovic shoots it into the wall. The rebound back to Segura. No score as we come up on three minutes in. Bennett against Gerson, two of the league's superstars going head to head on that exchange for the ball. And Bennett motors forward with it at pace. Bennett off the shelf of the boards to the hands of Coughlin. Miatovic advances across center. Swings it out to the right, Hundel to the corner. Give and go from Gerson. Hundel, great save by William Bonahene. Both goalkeepers are on their game early. Both with a seismic save. Alvarez, hassled by Bojelovic. Alvarez puts the brakes on. Pressure coming from Bordeaux. He got the pass away in the nick of time. Long shot is fought off by Coughlin. He turns away Luan Oliveira on that opportunity. Knocked down top end of the box by Sanchez. It's recovered by the wave. Bradley. Bond was beaten off the dribble there and that allowed the shot to get off, but it was well wide. 10.35 to play in the first quarter. Coughlin with the diving stab, gathering up the rebound was Lawal, but he couldn't put enough thrust behind it to put it away. Again, both goalkeepers extraordinarily alert to out of the gate here. And you could argue that those will be the two most important players today here in game two. Especially after an 11-8 opener. Fernandez. Nilton DeAndrade, who is second on the team in the regular season in points. He shoots one wide to the right. Darren Toby. In possession of it. 14 regular season games for Utica. Was able to rejoin the team in midseason. Had 16 blocked shots. He had a goal in game number one. Alava. Down the left side. Yelovitz holds it up. Chips it back to Toby who shoots. It was partially blocked as it made its way wide of the woodwork. Soma. To the corner, shot taken there, save made by Willie B on a lava. Segura hunts it down back at the midfield line. Great move down the left wing by Soma, looking back post. It was just behind Taylor Walter Bond who had crashed in. Flurry of activity in the Milwaukee zone, but we remain scoreless. Knocked out of the air by Ronaldinho. Soma, forward at pace. 
to Bond on the right wing. He shoots left footed. Great stand up block by the defense. Segura. Step over. Somov tried to play the centering pass off the boards. Miachovic to Correa, who had a goal, his first in a Utica uniform in game one in Milwaukee. He didn't have a goal on his line before that. And at this time of year, that contribution, that kind of contribution goes such a long way. Your stars get you to the dance oftentimes, but it's those role players who can step up and play a huge role. Great centering pass off the far glass and trying to bike it home was Gordy Gerson to no avail. Correa to Swift in his second season with the team. He had himself a goal in that play-in round against KC. His first career playoff goal. Nate Bordeaux with three career playoff goals on his line. To Gerson. Correa in front of the bench, Miatovic. And that's stolen back by the wave. From off the boards, here's Ian Bennett. Bennett battling with Correa. Bennett still with the ball at his feet, but not for long. Fernandez intervenes. Intercepted by Ben Raymond. Surges into the end boards. Doesn't get much further there. Alvarez trying to lose Gordy Gerson, who's up in the press. Anahene off the shelf of the boards in front of the Miller Lite Beer Garden. And that brings us to our media timeout for the first quarter. Money transfers are made easy with Quintas, powered by Western Union. Download the Quintas app today and use promo code MASL. We have no score out of the gate, 6.52 to go in the first quarter of action. Again, a couple of keystone saves in the early stages of this match between William Bonahene and Andrew Coughlin. Coughlin playing some of the best of his career in the stretch run of this season. And William Bonahene finally a well-deserved opportunity to get into the playoffs. 15-win regular season for Willie, the most of his career. A 15-7-1 record for the Rochester, New York native. And after the team plane touchdown, on their way to Utica here. I understand they were met by a little pizza delivery from Soccer Sam's company, Salvatore's. And I'm sure that made Willie happy in some respects because we had a nice chat in February following a Milwaukee-St. Louis game in Milwaukee. We had a great talk and pizza came up as part of that conversation. Top of the box to restart. Segura to the left. Bond sent that one over the end boards. William Bonahene, also a big fan of Wegmans, as I understand it, which coming from Western New York shouldn't surprise anyone. Toby, shoulder to shoulder, wins that ball off of Huffman. Counterattack for the city. Here's Bond, a burst of speed, he shoots. Willie B slides out and makes the save. Coughlin, right-footed pass to Toby. Down to Bond. Mid-season acquisition. Split through the double but lost the ball. Huffman trying to win this ball free off of Soma. It comes back to Sanchez. And redirected back to midfield. Segura to Alava. Alava, bow, soft little touch pass. Rattled into the box, knocked off of Willie B. 
Segura shoots and a sliding play on the ball there. We'll send that out of play. Stuart Grable, the UW Green Bay product, knocks that ball out of play. But it will be City Ball, left wing side, free kick. Miatovic switches left, shoots, blocked into the crowd. We'll get another look at this here. It will take place again just right on that third line for Milwaukee. Miatovic, left footed off the end glass. Gerson was trying to get to the volley and could not. From out of the center, down the right wing, a shot save made by Willie B. Headed by Huffman. Bo there to challenge. Up the right side to Grable. He has a crowd forming around him. And Segura, down he goes, foul called against Grable. City ball building forward here. Who will be the first team to score? And after the 11-8 score in the first game of the series, there's a recovery by Fernandez. More on that, a second Segura shoots. William Bonahene with a fantastic save. He's been under siege in the early stages here and he has been up to every task. Utica's done a nice job of maintaining possession, keeping play contained in the upper half. And the defense and goaltending is making plays when they need to for the Wave. Four twenty-six to go in the first quarter. Delay of game warning has been issued to Milwaukee. Top of the box, set piece, three-man wall down the center of the box for the wave. Gerson and Yelovitz are positioned at the posts here as the shot's taken by Segura, fought off immediately, Bond heads it right back in, and Will the Wall takes care of it from there, and he'll roll it out. Bennett down the left side. Marking him is Christian Segura, the hero of the play-in round. Luan swings it back to center. Leite plays the ball down the middle. Luan receives it from Steinwasher, the University of Indianapolis product. Left wing, shot wide. That one teed up by Alvarez. Steinwasher, Bond won the ball off of him to Gerson. Swift at center as Utica elects to slow the pace down. Alava. Leite goes with him to the end boards. Toby finds Swift. Swift has had a couple of clutch goals lately for the city. Down the right side. They were looking for Fernandez. The whistle sounds. Free kick for the city in front of their bench. Head coach Everton Marrera, you have to think he might be heavily in the conversation for coach of the year with the way that he's brought this younger Utica side together. And the rookies have played so, so well. Even the second-year guys like an Alava or a Soma, who has the ball now, have played extremely well. Off the end glass, 
And William Bonahene recovers the ball. Salmaron, down he goes on the challenge with the lava. Utica and Milwaukee, game two of this conference semifinal series. Utica needs a win to force the knockout game. Milwaukee, with a win, would close out the series and advance to the conference finals, where Baltimore waits in the wings. Nicely off the chest of Miatovic, doing a great job holding the ball up against Huffman. And now Bordeaux on the counter, launches a pass forward. Fernandez, off balance, the shot wide! Follow-up opportunity was building there for Bordeaux. He got upended down the middle of the box. After the chance for Correa landed wide. And with 1.52 to go in the first quarter, another look at it here. That's a great pass by Fernandez. Correa just labeled it wide. Bordeaux taken down the middle of the box. Free kick for the city in a great spot. Dead center of the key. Can Utica grab the lead? Miatovic, Segura wide. Rattles back to Bond. Segura, lateral pass to Miatovic. Great move to get around, or so he thought on Oliveira. Oliveira, nice run down and recovery there. Seemed like the initial move got him. Lot to be said for great acceleration in a tight area. 124 to play here in the first quarter. Down the right side, Sanchez. Hundelt is with him on the mark. Sanchez shoots, caught the hand of Coughlin, followed up by Raymond. It ultimately makes its way to Huffman and he sends it ascending into the netting. A palpable intensity, especially for the first quarter. Both these teams want the early lead. And you have to think that the tension is contributing to some of these missed chances along with the great play of the goalkeepers. Fernandez. Nilton kept it in play. Going to work on Ben Raymond. Nilton centers it. Toby couldn't slip off his mark. Here come the wave on the counterattack. Alvarez to Ben Raymond. Ben, of course, from Baldwinsville, New York. 2021 champion with San Diego. As part of that super team that the Sockers were able to build during the pandemic season. Bennett had it stolen by Fernandez. Toby. Eight seconds to play in the first quarter. Coughlin chips it downfield. Could be an opportunity for one final buildup. Tough luck with the touch there for Nilton, and that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. No score. Goose eggs on either side as defense and goaltending reign supreme over the first 15 minutes of game two. 45 minutes to go in regulation. We'll step away here on MASL TV on Twitch.
A great playoff caliber performance, as always, by the Utica City Dance Crew. 0 0 our score at the end of 15 minutes of play here on MASL TV. And right now, the story has been the goalkeepers, no doubt about it. Andrew Coughlin at his end, William Bonahane at his. The native New Yorkers putting on a show here in the Empire State. As we go into quarter number two, an opportunity to tell you about a few great initiatives that the MASL content team has been working on, including MASL Monday. Catch every M MASL Monday every Monday night on Sirius XMFC Channel 157 at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Alex Bostjevansky is joined every week by special guests from across the league to recap the games and discuss the league's hot topics. And there's MASL content aplenty at MASLsoccer.com. MASLsoccer.com is your home for everything Major Arena Soccer League. All the latest news, leaderboards, highlights, and more. Let's go. Second quarter. An absolutely raucous start to this match, but no goals. Willie B with six saves for the Wave. Coughlin with six as well for Utica. Just 14 seconds into the second quarter. In zone free kick coming up for Milwaukee. Bradley, the team's Iron Man, on the left wing side. He's behind the ball. Shoots, it went off the foot of Miatovic. Coughlin dives on it. And he looks to stretch the field with that terrific arm of his. Again, leads the league in goalkeeper assists. 10 of the 24 of his career have come this year. Alvarez, double team to the ball. Not a lot of help coming yet for Milwaukee. Finally, Grable comes in late. City recovers the ball. And it's Soma holding up at center. Segura checks in from off the bench. Hundelt, left wing side. Slides the lateral pass to Toby. Segura, off the corner glass to Taylor Walter Bond. Marking him as Bradley. Hinged back across to Hundell. Shuffles it out to the corner, finds Gerson. Gerson. Toby. And now to Segura. Down to Bond. Bond trying to post up Bradley. And lost the ball in the process. Stolen, and Luan Oliveira looks across center. Raymond challenged there by Taylor Walter Bond. It comes back to Coughlin, who plays it around his old teammate. Up to center, Grable over Gerson, and the foul is called. My Twitch question of the day, and I don't know the history of something like this happening in the MASL, but I do know a few teams do practice this way on occasion. What are your thoughts on the possibility of playing an arena slash indoor soccer game in an outdoor environment? It's great weather today. I feel like it's a great opportunity for you to share your thoughts. I know San Diego practices outside quite a bit. But I don't really know the full background otherwise. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts here. Miatovic shoots wide off the end boards. Grable boxes out Bordeaux. The battle continues down the middle. Shot taken by Gerson. That's blocked. Grable with the header. And looks over towards Bennett. It's out of play. So someone in the chat, Crypto Coffee 13 in our Twitch chat, said that they have played an outdoor game before. In a 200 by 85 setup probably like this. 
I think obviously with it being a winter sport, you would need to do it in a relatively warm market. Eric Bergrew chiming in, the voice, or one of the voices of the Kansas City Comets in our Twitch chat. He says they played it that way all the time growing up in Southern California, and with that kind of weather, who can blame you? The pass through Gerson, left for Bordeaux, he shoots left-footed, blocked away. No score still, 12-44 to play in the second quarter. Gerson. Toby, out of Trinidad and Tobago, to the native of Belgrade, Serbia, Bo Jelovic. Leite, trying to keep the play closed out on Jelovic long enough for Willie B to pick up the ball, and he does. And Willie B lobbing it downfield, right arm, pretty strong there for Willie B. Comes from a very prolific tennis family, as I understand it. But actually played quite a bit of lacrosse growing up, in addition to soccer. Salmaron. Redirected along there by Luan, but the foul had already been called. Utica City FC in all competitions at home, 9-3-1. They've won seven of their last eight on this turf. Save for that one loss to Harrisburg. They've been perfect here at home since late January. But the circumstances, the stakes, are like nothing this franchise has seen over the last couple of years. Again, a win today and a win in the minigame would put the city shot wide here by Bond from the top end of the box. It would send Utica to their first ever conference final. A lot of business to take care of between now and then. Sean Osqueta on the counter. And the ball slipping behind him. It finds Bond. Left wing, Milton DeAndrade tripped up at the entry line. Came together with Osqueta. They will let them play on. Play continuing to flow here with the odd. We have no score. Sanchez holds it up on the left side. Ten and a half to play before halftime. Alvarez to Ian Bennett, who is notoriously good as a shooter from that left corner. That's blocked away to center. Soma recovers the ball. Makes the move to the left side. His old teammate Ben Raymond chasing him down to the corner. Wide open down the middle was Fernandez. And he shot it over the end glass. 10.03 before halftime. Do want to point out as well, another user in our Twitch chat, off my question of the day, said they'd love to see a outdoor game on the deck of the uh, USS Midway out in San Diego. That would be fun. Although I have a feeling the ball might play a little bit awkwardly on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Although they have played basketball there, so anything goes, I guess. Leite blocks it out of play. One final thought on that whole thing. Uh, Twitch chat user Yargle says, whoever kicks the ball over the deck has to get it. I hope they're good at two things if that's the case. The high dive and swimming. Miatovic, Gerson, had that one blocked to the end boards.
Willie B with the ball in his hands. Loops the line drive through the neutral zone. That's headed by Segura. Cutis Lawal will be the first man on the scene. And he's hounded here by Gerson. Ben Raymond. Bo Yelovitz, great back pressure to intervene. Bo trying to keep possession of it here. Played it right back to one of his adversaries, Javier Steinwasher. Three goals in his last two games for Javier. And a foul called at midfield will keep possession in Milwaukee's hands. Osquita. Give and go from the far boards. Can't get free enough. Correa with the sliding challenge at the flex into the scoreboard. That ball will be spotted at the third line of Utica City off the superstructure violation. Leite, up to the ball, great save by Coughlin. The rebound to the far corner, Luan is there. Marked by Quentin Swift. Luan, off the end boards, loose ball, Bradley can't get there. Bradley, again off the end boards, cleaned up there by Toby. Leite and Bradley are around it. Entry pass was briefly blocked there by Toby. Bradley recovers. Huffman, his last two seasons in terms of scoring output have been the best two of his career. 33 points in the regular season, two goals and an assist in game one. Marcio Leite. Unbelievable performance in this series opener. Two goals and four assists. Averaged 1.9 points per game as a defender to rank among the top 10 players in the league in points per game. Bennett, under pressure from Hundell. Swung back to Alvarez. Huffman got a bit of separation behind Toby, but Toby is right back there to his shoulder. Huffman. Sneaks it off the end boards. Coughlin recovers. Utica on the counter. Bond sets up Milton. And Milton shoots high. The intensity going up alongside the temperature here in Utica, New York. 0-0 remains the score as we hit the media timeout with 7-12 to go before the break. And once again, an opportunity to thank some of our valued league partners, including Alt Sports Data, the official sports data partner of the Major Arena Soccer League. Alt Sports is a San Diego-based leader in trading and consumer data for action, alternative, and emerging sports. By SI Ticks. If you want to see a game live, visit Sports Illustrated Tickets for the best tickets to see the MASL action in your favorite arenas, now with no fees at checkout. By Quintus, app, card, wallet. Quintus has everything you need to manage your money your way. Visit Quintus.com today to learn more. And make sure you're signed up and ready to go if you want to play in the MASL in the future for the MASL Pro Player Combine 2023. Visit MASLsoccer.com for more information. Zero, zero with 7-12 left in the half. And both teams getting the opportunity for a breather. Again, there's some unseasonably warm weather, not only outside, but in this building. And for the city, a great opportunity for these fans to do a little bit of tailgating before this game. Which is not something we get to do all the time in Central New York. I mean, I'm sure you could try, but it might not be too comfortable. And the city here today trying to go further than any Utica City team has gone before. 
Although they come home here with a series deficit for the first time in their history. You go back to the 2019 playoffs, they won the first leg in Baltimore before the second leg and knockout game went the way of the blast. Of course, we all know who the champion was that year, the Milwaukee Wave. Leite to Sanchez as we're back underway. Leite lined that one into the crowd in about the third row. Nice catch by that fan down in 101. Winner takes on Baltimore. Utica needs a win right now and then one in the mini game. The Wave need the one just to close it out. Yelovitz to Miatovic to Segura. Segura. Through the challenge, got it back from the wall, off the glass, SCORES! Segura picks up where he left off, in this building! He closes out the playing game with the winner! And he steps in and delivers the opener in game two of this series. It was going to take a bit of tenacity to get one. It starts when he gets the bounce he needs off the end boards and then just gets enough leverage around Bradley. Christian Segura has been on a mission in this postseason. That's his fourth goal of the playoffs. Fifth point overall. And that gets a nice rise out of this Utica crowd that has been waiting to explode for a quarter plus and getting into the latter stages of this second quarter. So the onus on the wave to respond here early. Headed back by Fernandez. And for Utica, the first time in five matches that they've scored the first goal. Bond wide on that opportunity out of the corner. Lifted away by Alvarez. Hundel. Miachovic to Nate Bordeaux. 20 point regular season for Nate Bordeaux. Played his college ball over at Rutgers. Long attempt, Hundelt cleared out of the box. Alan Salmeron bumped that away for the wave. And Utica will hold it up in the neutral zone, leading this one 1-0. One the early goal by Christian Segura who, by the way, in that play-in round game against KC, scored the 50th goal that he has scored with this franchise. Great chip across to Gordy Gerson. He couldn't get it settled down in time. Steinwasher slipping free. Gets around Gerson. Foul called on the way. to play before the break. Bradley was off balance as he let it go.
One nothing City, our score. Another look here at what just transpired in the neutral zone. And Bradley just goes down forward. Bradley. Off the outside of his foot to Leite. To Ian Bennett. Bennett with six goals this season against Utica. Including five in a single game in the first meeting of the year. It's unbelievable what this guy can do. When given the time and space to operate. Again, there's such a similar danger factor with the Stars at the top end of each attack. Gordy Gerson for Utica, Ian Bennett for Milwaukee. If they're given any time and space at all, look out. And right now, the goalkeepers, Bonahane and Coughlin, playing like two of the game's very best, as many in these two markets would tell you they are. 2.49 before halftime. Segura, saucers it, Gerson scores! His third of the playoffs! And Gordy Gerson doubles up the Utica lead with 2.46 left in the second quarter. Bit of a delay. On the line drive, pass across from Segura. Gerson stays in position, doesn't crash the back post. Just stands there on the top end of the box, basically on an imaginary line. Getting out to the wing there. That's a great shot. 2 nothing City with 2.46 to go before halftime. Segura with the assist, and he'll have a multi-point account on his stat line heading in towards halftime. The Utica goal, the first one, was originally credited to Taylor Walter Bond, but that's now been recredited to Segura. So goal and an assist for the man spending his third season with the city. Leite shoots. Fought off by Coughlin. Toby has an open Bo Yelovitz. Great early cross to find Soma. Soma under pressure. That's cleared away. Undelt swings it back to Miatovic. Mijatovic back to Coughlin. And they look to play a little target ball downfield. Bond hands it off. Bordeaux. Will he be with a terrific save right at the edge of the box? Luan Oliveira. Quickly up to Bradley. And he's toppled over by Bordeaux. The foul called against Utica. Luan, left wing side. Left footed pass to Alvarez. Shadowed there by Bordeaux as he played it back to the left side. Sama is up on Luan. Hoffman. A lot of pressuring. Unloaded the pass in very, very short time. Sama disrupting the play. But the foul was called against Utica. 
he would have been off to the races if there was no whistle, but Luan went down hard. Thirty-eight seconds before halftime. Two nothing Utica. Segura and Gerson with the goals. Bennett gives one a try. Blocked by Toby and out of play. If you're Utica, this half has been about as close to ideal as I think you could ask for. Leite, Hundel blocked it. Sharp angle shot fought off by Coughlin. Bennett keeps it alive across the box. If you're the Wave, this is a team with a high ceiling, a lot of potential. They were the first place team in the East. But they'll have a drawing board to go back to here at the break. A lot of time left in this one. Utica grabs the early leverage and leads at the break. Two to nothing. Let's send it down to Michael Lear and Gordy Gerson. Gordy, not sure if you can hear me, but what did you guys think of that first half from your side? Oh, hang on. Take us through the first half, Gordy. Uh, I mean, we're creating opportunities. We're defending well. We're putting everything on the line here. We know there's no tomorrow if we don't get tonight done. But let me hear you guys one more time. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to help us right now. We're not done yet. And just be ready. We need you guys one more time. Thanks, Gordy. The crowd with a roar that would no doubt not only be heard in this building, but also maybe around the corner at the Adirondack Bank building itself. They've been into it. It's been loud. It's been intense. All to play for at the break. 2 nothing Utica, but we've got plenty more ahead on MASL TV. Enjoy the halftime entertainment, everyone. It's time for the Davidson of Rome High Five Intermission. Turn to the person next to you and give them your best high five. Ready? Three, two, one, bam! Go Utica FC! For your best deal on a vehicle at Davidson of Rome. Family owned for over 50 years. Shop over 800 new and used cars, trucks, and SUVs at DavidsonGMRome.com. Let's go, Utica. What's your story? What moments make life an adventure? Community is where memories happen. At Bank of Utica, enriching our community for current and future generations has been part of our mission since 1927. By supporting local, community-focused organizations, we work together to open doors to education, the arts, and meaningful career paths. Making stories to remember. Bank with Utica. Shoot! He scores! Goal! This is MASL at the half. What's going on, everybody? I'm Alex Bastjavansky. Great to see you again. Hope that you're loving the game so far. Tons to cover today. The playoffs kicked off last week. Here's a look at all the action. Ball hitches up on his feet, still not clear. Morales fires and scores! Cleaning up the loose slop, Morales runs over the loose ball and puts it back to a four goal lead. Luis Morales was on fire for Mesquite, racking up four points as the Outlaws traveled to Tacoma for the West 
play-in game and came out on top. They eliminate the Stars and advance to face the juggernaut that is San Diego. And unfortunately for Mesquite, the Sockers flexed their muscles in the conference semifinal. Game one took place in Texas and San Diego was firing on all cylinders. They dismantled the Outlaws, taking the series opener 7-1. So it was back to America's finest city for game two. It was Craig Charles's world and everyone else was just living in it. The mustachioed maestro scored three highlight reel goals and added two assists. Look at this banger right here. One time, unreal. The Sockers outscored the Outlaws 15-1 to over the two games to sweep them aside and advance to the Western Conference Final. Let's head east now. Kansas City visiting Utica for the play-in game and the right to take on Milwaukee. This was one of the best games of the season. The Comets jumped out to a 3-0 lead, but Utica clawed back and the two squads slugged it out to the bitter end. It was actually tied 6-6 at the end of regulation, setting up overtime and one of the goals of the year. Biatovic on the set piece, Gerson dangles through the middle, still has it, that's Segura! Gerson scores! Absolute pedlam in Utica. It was actually Christian Segura with the brilliant winner there. What a contest. UCFC advances to face the wave. Florida and Baltimore squared off in one Eastern Conference semifinal. Game one took place in Lakeland and it was one heck of a contest. A tight battle the whole way with the visiting blast pulling off a 4-3 road win. Back they went to Sake Arena for game two which has been a fortress for Baltimore all year long. Not in this game though. Missing Lucas Roque due to suspension, they fell 14 to one to the Tropics, just Baltimore's third home loss all year. So it was off to the deciding game three, which was a dandy. Florida, uh, Drew Ruggles opening the scoring for the Tropics, but the blast had Mr. Roque back in the lineup and he was a difference maker, racking up a goal and an assist as Baltimore managed to hold off the Tropics. They edged them by a 3-2 final score to advance to the Eastern Conference Final. Back to the West we go. Number two Chihuahua taking on number three Monterey in another semifinal. Game one was at Arena Monterey. It was tied until the fourth quarter when the Savage pumped in four straight goals to double up the flash 8-4. Game two was back in Chihuahua and their Mexican rivals were not about to go quietly into the night. Luis Castillo had a four point game for the Flash as they downed the home team 10-7 to force a deciding game three. It was another tight one, but in front of a packed house at Corner Sport Arena. The home side managed to pull out the 3-2 victory and advance to set up what should be an epic conference final against San Diego, number two against the number one soccer. So here is your playoff bracket. Milwaukee and Utica are playing in the conference semifinal out east for the right to advance to face Baltimore in the final. San Diego and Chihuahua facing off in the Western Conference final. And your playoff scoring leaders right now Craig Childs and Ricardo Diegas tied with seven points at the top, followed by Castillo of Monterey, Hernandez of Chihuahua, and Freitas of the Florida Tropics. Five points to round out your top scores. Play of the week, it had to be Christian Segura from Utica City with this absolute beauty, the golden goal against Kansas City. Look at this, one, two, three, four, five players he takes on, beats them all, with the winning goal setting off the Bedlam in Utica. The biggest players come through in the big moments. That is exactly what Christian Segura did for the Blues. That is definitely our MASL play of the week. And that is all the time we've got for this week. But just a reminder that all throughout the postseason, you can stay up to date with everything by checking out the league's official social media outlets. And of course, you can watch every single MASL game live on Twitch. Enjoy the rest of the game. See you next week. Spend your weekend brunching at Babes every Saturday and Sunday, now from 8 a.m. Yes, 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. The only place to be is Babes for brunch. 
featuring our famous sticky bun pancakes. And did we mention $10 endless mimosas all brunch long? What more could you want in your weekend? See you at Babes, open seven days a week on 80 North Genesee Street in Utica. When it comes to investing, looking from a fresh perspective can make all the difference. It can provide what we call an unlock, a realization that often reveals a better path forward. At Wells Fargo, it's our expertise in finding this kind of insight that has led us to become one of the largest investment and wealth management firms in the country. Discover how we can help find your unlock. Wave gets it out of Eske. Wow. Hammers a shot at a goal. Big time conversion by Will Eske. That's got to be a candidate for goal of the week because that time Will Eske, he hits a volley from outside the yellow line that dipped over the top of Willie B off the underside of the crossbar. Back to Keats. Or Keats down there. And there's Nick Pereira with the goal. Well, there's a reason why he's MVP candidate. Not only is it a, is, is it a goal, but he has the audacity. He gets his ball and doesn't hammer. He just dinks the ball to the keepers. I think we talked about this the last time I was here. Great Rojo. little combination. Rojo got man! He got through and scores! Juan Manuel Rojo put his autograph on that part of the felt. Uh, that's a very dangerous area for him, for Rojo, and what a quality finish. Poking it away. Benji's open. Neto throwing it long for Benji. Can Benji get it? Benji shoots and he hits it home. Credit that assist with Neto. Benji was wide open. He's happy. We were talking at halftime about the, the, the strong third quarter that soccer's traditionally have. Felipe, that's some strength for you, baby. Golasso! And he buries the ball just under the crossbar. What a good finish. <laughs> Leagueway at the back post. Shot blocked by Keats. Now Tyler John pulls this ball down. Plays himself off the boards. Look at him go. Weaves his way through and pokes it home. Tyler John on the shorthanded goal. Hopland going to stray all the way into the offensive end of the field. Here's a chance in front and a goal. Taylor Walter Bond with a second. He just buries that one as he got. Was waved and signed by the Comet. Great to see him. Oh, what Matt Falk. Ball. Matt Falk. Holy cow. How pretty was that? And the Great Dane making his presence felt early. Oh, Matt Falk got a better goal. touch on it. What a goal. He's been consistent. Bigmore, Bigmore maintains. Bigmore, Bigmore with a shot. Oh! Bigmore on the league way. Are you kidding me? And he just, he beats Jones and hammers a ball to the upper corner and cleans some cobwebs out of the goal oh net there, buddy. Goodness. Holy cow, what a goal. Corner.
From couch to car and couch again, Cookies Q is your one-stop shop for dinner and dessert. Just give us a call, let us know you're ordering to go, and we'll have your meal ready for you hot and fresh. Eat like a boss and try our famous Boss Burger, or try one of our juicy chicken sandwiches. We've got combos, kids' meals, and more. Did we mention we've got ice cream seven days a week, all year round? And if you're feeling extra lazy, Cookies is available on DoorDash and Grubhub. Cookies Q and Creamery, open seven days a week on North Genesee Street in Utica. Banking is an important part of our everyday lives. But at Bank of Utica, it's not the same old story. We make sure you never get the runaround. When you call, you speak with a real person from your community with experience and the personal knowledge of you and your account. We make the time for you so you can make time for everything else. Making time for your story. Bank with Utica. It's here, the only robotic GPS in a state outside of New York City. The Excelsius GPS. No need to travel to the big cities. The best technology is right here at Central New York Brain and Spine Neurosurgery. The Excelsius GPS provides a safer and more precise surgery with better outcomes for you. Improved accuracy, less time under anesthesia, and incisions are reduced to only millimeters. For world-class care and the latest technology, call Central New York Brain and Spine Neurosurgery where Dr. Q cares about you. ClickOnSupplies.com has no shortage of supplies for your home or office needs. From furniture to post-it notes, ClickOnSupplies.com is always stocked with over 45,000 items, and shipping is always free. ClickOnSupplies.com is an enterprise of CAPV. Your purchases help provide services and create jobs for people who are blind or visually impaired. Create your free account today and save 10% on your first order. Use code WELCOME10 at ClickOnSupplies.com. Warm up at Stewart Shops. From hot coffee to soups, hot entrees, and cheeseburgers, Stewart Shops is a great place for a quick bite that will warm you up and satisfy your cravings this time of year. You'll find more choices than most fast food restaurants, like the delicious meatballs, the crispy chicken sandwich, chicken tenders, and the endless combinations of make your own hot dogs with free meat sauce. You're in and back on the road in no time with a hearty meal that will keep you going all day. Warm up at Stewart Shops with great easy food. The opportunities and the experiences that a student gets at Herkimer College really sets them up for future success. They have given me the skill set I need in order to be successful. There's like so many amazing professors. They're helping me a lot. Classrooms are small, a lot of interaction. We are one of the top community colleges in the nation. We are smart. Focused. Vibrant. Connected. Diverse. Supportive. Welcoming. Affordable. We are Herkimer College. It's time for the Davidson of Rome High Five Intermission. Turn to the person next to you and give them your best high five. Ready? Three, two, one, bam! Go Utica FC! Score your best deal on a vehicle at Davidson of Rome. Family owned for over 50 years. Shop over 800 new and used cars, trucks, and SUVs at DavidsonGMRome.com. Let's go, Utica. A look at the outside of the Adirondack Bank Center at the Utica Memorial Auditorium. The sun shining outdoors as well as in on the home team, Utica City FC. They lead 2 to nothing over the Milwaukee Wave at halftime of this second game of the Eastern Conference Semifinal Series. Milwaukee leads the series one game to zero. Utica needs a victory to move on to a knockout game for the opportunity to advance. While the Wave just need to find a way to win this game to move on to the conference finals where Baltimore will await. 
Two goals in this one so far, both of them belonging to Utica. The scoring starting by way of Christian Segura at 8.54 of the second quarter. This following a scoreless first where there were 16 combined shots. Segura at 8.54 and then at 12.13, Gordy Gerson from Christian Segura making it a 2-0 score at the half. Other things to know, Derek Huffman given a yellow card for descent at 14.59 of the second quarter. Of course, there's no power play, no change in manpower there, but that's what's registered in the stats right now. So certainly, if that is the case, that is a huge loss for Milwaukee for those five minutes as Huffman has been one of their most prolific players throughout the season. Well, you have an opportunity, a chance to thank. As there is the announcement of the card. For Derek, for Huffman, so. That now announced to the crowd and we are current and up to date on that. Indeed, it is Huffman receiving a card there. Just about ready to go here with the third quarter of action here at the Adirondack Bank Center at the Utica Memorial Auditorium. 2-0 Utica leading the way. The kickoff will be performed by Cutis LaWall. And let's go. Third quarter up and running. Two goals second for the sitting. Having them in the driver's seat. Leite. to Alvarez. So again, a five minute yellow card issued to Huffman right at halftime. We're playing five aside still to open this third quarter. Downfield the wall. One on one matchup here with Miatovic. He backs away, tries the early lateral pass. That was sniffed out by Hundelt. Gerson lost his footing. Salmaron helps the wall recover the ball. Bo Yelovitz now holds it up at center. Swift to Miatovich. The yellow card for dissent, by the way, for Derek Kaufman. I saw a user in the chat had asked. Again, feel free to drop your questions and comments in our Twitch chat. We'll see if we can get to a few of you here in this second half. Soma recovers the ball. He has Bond presenting a target to the left. Played off the end board. Soma off the volley and high. And a hard collision down the middle of the field. As he let that shot go, he collides with Samaron. And Soma a little bit slow to get up here. And now back to his feet. Today's coverage presented in part by SI Ticks. If you want to see a game live, visit Sports Illustrated Tickets for the best tickets to see MASL action in your favorite arenas. Also, don't forget to follow the league on social media. Get the latest news on the MASL and your favorite teams by following MASL Soccer on Facebook and Instagram and MASL Arena on Twitter. Again, the 2-0 score. Steinwasher slips off a man. That was a lava. Spins it to the middle. Bradley not able to receive the pass. Swift broke it up. And a sizable reaction as the foul is called. By this crowd numbering well over 3,000 strong today. 
And a lot of reasons to be excited within the walls of this building today. As I'll explain in a moment, Leite sets up Bradley, cleared away to center. Luan trying to win that free. Bond steals it. Swift looking vertically for Soma, but that's recovered by Leite. Bradley off the back heel. Grable. You may be wondering what the rest of the good news is. Well, Utica today, this venue, the Adirondack Bank Center at the Utica Memorial Auditorium, announcing today that they're hosting the IIHF Women's Ice Hockey World Championships next season. Huge deal. Shot taken by Lawal, save made by Coughlin. So that'll be the top division world championship, by the way. So Team USA, Team Canada, they'll all be here. Remarkable day for this venue. So lots to look forward to, not only today, but in the future. And a great second half on tap here with Utica leading 2-0. Of course, I managed to work in the phrase on tap in a game between two cities known for their beer. That's only fitting, right? Segura downfield to Fernandez. Back to Miotovic. Fernandez, Miotovic standing at the center. Segura. Holds it up along the wing. Sanchez was watching him. Bo Yelovitz draws a double team to the corner. Stefan Miotovic makes a move. He shoots Willie B with a great diving save to his left. And the rebound is chased away to center. Willie had a terrific first half with eight saves on 10 shots. Coughlin a perfect 10 for 10 before the break. In what has no doubt been a showcase of goalkeeping early. Now into the third quarter. Now with every passing minute, the pressure will intensify further. Long shot taken by Nilton. Knocked away by Willie B. Bordeaux, off the back heel, Toby. It was way in front of him, but he runs it down the corner. And now walking back with it is Gordy Gerson. Knifed downfield, lifted away out of the zone, recovered by Segura, here's Bond, he shoots, it's high. Follow up on the header, overhead by Segura, score! On the rebound, it's Taylor Walter Bond. And the score now 3-0 in favor of Utica City FC with 9.29 to play in the third quarter. Comes in off the high glass. It was Hundelt who got a piece of it. And then ultimately Bond in with that late run. Good things happen when you get to the back post. Bond overwhelms. A good effort to try to clear the ball there by Ben Raymond. The leverage now to the tune of three goals for the home team. And the Milwaukee wave. Will look to rally out of this 3-0 deficit. They put Utica behind by three in the first half of game one. Now here early in the second half of game two, it's Utica in front. Downfield, hustling to it, Swift. Willie B came out to play it, hard collision there. 
somewhat similar to the collision that happened between Willie B and Gordy Gerson, except Quentin wasn't sliding here. But you may remember that from game number one. Similar looking play in some respects. Spot on the field is about identical. But Willie B is slow to get up here, and that's not good if you're in Milwaukee. There's a challenge flag out as well. Hopefully Willie's okay here. So it was Quentin Swift who was shown a card. City is challenging the rolling of a blue card. And they will go to the monitor to find out this crew today led by Ryan Sigich. And Willie had at that point unloaded the ball. As you see Quentin come in. Really just kind of try to break his fall on the way in, it looked like. Willie definitely got the worst of the transaction. And so this crew, again, led by the MASL head of officials, Ryan Sigich. They're having a pretty thorough con conversation here in front of the scorer's table to determine what to do. And again, they have to feel that the evidence is conclusive enough to overturn the blue card, which it, in their judgment, is not. City to the penalty kill. Wave to the power play. And it's Quentin Swift taking the seat. The wave two of two on Thursday on the power play. Utica 0 for two on the kill. In the regular season, the wave 49% on the power play. Utica on the kill in the regular season was at 64%. So they do uphold the call on the field. Blue card against Swift. And here we go. 3-0 the score. Can the Wave inch their way closer with this power play? Bennett shoots high from the left wing. Hundell back to Toby. Off of Huffman and out of play. This will be Utica ball in deep. And they'll have the opportunity to restart play here. Off the chest of Yelovitz. Recovers it off of Leite. Two on one shorthanded counter developing. Hundelt steps to the middle. And off that delay, Milwaukee with bodies in position. Toby swings it to the corner. Stepping out, Yelovitz, the pass behind the heels of Toby. Hundelt in late behind the play and shoots a screamer that goes wide. Hoffman, Yelovitz together. As Alvarez leads the way forward for the wave. Milwaukee with the power play for another 40 seconds. The blue card belonging to Quentin Swift. Hoffman. Luan at the point. Leite. Return pass. Hoffman. Great entry pass. Bennett was open. Cleared away to the third line. Coughlin getting a hand on it there. Shot goes wide for Bennett. Hundell off the rebound, chips it down the boards. Five seconds left in the power play, and that'll do it for the advantage. Successful penalty kill. Utica had some trouble on Thursday with that. So they'll be happy to get this one out of the way.
Milwaukee, meanwhile, fruitless for the first time on the power play in this postseason. Bennett off the end glass, Coughlin there to recover. Loops it around the scoreboard. Bradley looks to Leite right side. Lawall off the shelf of the boards. Bordeaux watching him. Double team pressure comes in from Nilton. Back to the point to Bradley. Leite, stand up block made by Bordeaux. Coughlin was diving back if he needed it. Here comes Nilton. Leading the way forward for this Utica counter. And Swift met by the intervention from Lawal. Nilton shoots it off the end boards. And it's scooped up by Willie B. Game two of this three-leg series. If necessary, if Utica can hold on to this lead and find a way to win, there would be the mini game to follow. If Milwaukee wins, the series would be over. And the winner of this series will face Baltimore. Huffman under pressure. Correa leaning on him. Bradley had it right at his feet. Was trying to maybe volley one home. Nilton with a great high press. Here's Coughlin unloading. A foot race. Raymond will beat Nilton to the ball. A little bit of trouble here on this breakout. A bit of a mishandle, but now Grable has it secured. Three nothing Utica. The city in command. Asqueta. They call him the squid. Recovered here by Segura. And swung out to Nilton as there was a collision there. Segura, Grable involved. Salmaron at the center line. Slanted back to Raymond. Into the right wing corner, Hundel. Quickly forward from Fernandez to Gordy Gerson. Gerson nearly tripping over the ball, got back to his feet, collides with Salmeron. Four oh five left in the third. If you're just joining us, the city leading two nothing at halftime. They had a third goal here in the third quarter. A much different flow to this game than what we saw in game one at Panther Arena. Bond, who had the third Utica goal, shoots one right into the wall on the free kick. Back to Miatovic. He's holding this ball for a long while. Alava to Gerson. Now at 3.39 to play in the third quarter. We have a Milwaukee player shaking up on the far side of the field here. And I think they'll take the opportunity to take the media timeout at this point as that player continues to receive attention. And it looks like all will be okay. An opportunity to thank some of our valued league partners and mention some content opportunities that exist for you out there if you happen to be a fan of this great game. Money transfers are made easy with Quintas powered by Western Union. Download the Quintas app today and use promo code MASL. If you're new to us today and want to learn more about the league or just want to keep up to date on the playoffs, MASLsoccer.com is your home for everything major arena soccer league, all the latest news, leaderboards, highlights, and more. 
And if you, maybe you'd like to play in this league someday, if you think you have what it takes to score the game-winning goal, sign up at MASLsoccer.com to receive more information on the 2023 MASL Pro Player Combine. If you're interested, by the way, in following the rest of these playoffs, Tuesday will be your next opportunity. Western Conference Finals begin. San Diego and Chihuahua, 10 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and then at 10.35 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Both of those games can be found on the MASL Twitch channels. Schedule, of course, is very much in flux with the Eastern Conference Finals. Depending upon, first and foremost, who wins this series. And then second of all, if it was to be Utica, they're waiting on some results in the American Hockey League to wrap up right now. That would determine who the Utica Comets in the AHL would play in their playoff series. So there's a couple of possibilities that have been floated around. But venues do have a significant amount of influence on who will play where and when. And you've got other tenants in the buildings as well. They have to be taken care of. Anyway, we should know pretty soon, regardless of who wins this match, exactly how the Eastern Conference Finals will be scheduled. Steinwasher unloads to Huffman with the extra pass. Raymond was caught too deep. Raymond at the third line shoots one right into the face of Bond from just south of Milwaukee. He's from the Chicago area. Through a few legs, Raymond scores! Ben Raymond scores in the building he used to call home. And the waiver on the board with 2.52 to go in the third quarter. Fourth goal of the season in all competitions for Ben Raymond. And his first of these playoffs. So for a moment, he gets the better of his old team to make the score three to one. A timeout on the field with 2.52 left in the third quarter. And again, a high leverage position here. Two goal gap, 2.52 left in the third quarter. Both these teams in their respective huddles have to be looking at this as an opportunity to create the momentum for the fourth quarter. Utica has had the wind at their back for almost 45 minutes here, for the most part. They've definitely had the majority share, the lion's share of the opportunities. They had the three nothing lead. And maybe this is what Milwaukee needs to get themselves back in the flow of this game. See a few people talking AHL in the chat here in our Twitch chat tonight. And I will say that's kind of an interesting thread. Out of the five teams that remain in these playoffs, three of them share a building with an AHL team. Milwaukee and Utica are two of them. The third is San Diego. The only two that don't are Chihuahua and Baltimore. Segura through the box. That one deflected high. And immediately removed from the Milwaukee zone by Asqueta. Bradley beside himself as the whistle sounds. Free kick awarded to Utica. 
We did have a user on our Twitch chat make a very good point. Esfellows23 says that the San Diego goals in the AHL did not make the playoffs this year. So, won't cause a lot of havoc for scheduling, but... They do have a lot of concerts, indoor football, lacrosse, out there at Pachanga Arena, so they have a lot of considerations as well. That's a busy building. Miachovic to Hundell on the run, shoots wide. Rebound back to Nilton DeAndrade. Ends up taken down, coming through the box. Fernandez knocks over Salmeron. Foul called, it's Milwaukee with the free kick. Another look here as Hundell played it off the end boards. Leite coming through on that challenge. Hoffman, 3-1 Utica, 116 left in the third quarter. Utica scored the first three, Milwaukee has the most recent from Ben Raymond. Off the end boards, Coughlin dives on it. Unloaded to Nilton, Nilton got around Leite. Ball came loose in behind. The wave at least recovered to the third line, Hundelt to Bordeaux. Nilton involved as well. And a nice job there by Nate Bordeaux to get back in front of it. 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. Anyone's ball game, only two goals separating these two. Long attempt in on frame. Will he be able to recover for Milwaukee? Putting in another gem today between the pipes for the wave. And definitely played one of the best goalkeeping games I saw all season in person when the Wave in early February went to St. Louis and shut out the ambush. And I mean, Willie B was part of that. Augie Ray also had to come in and play a lot of the second half because of an injury. Asquenta shoots wide, gets another chance and shoots wide. Bond. Raymond, chopped down by Bond, foul called against the Utica. Forward, Taylor Walter Bond. Bond on his third team of the year, albeit very briefly in between. He started the year in Florida, was briefly sent to Harrisburg, and then of course the deal was made that brought him to Utica. Long attempt at the buzzer, wide. That one teed up by Luan. We've hit the end of three. Will Utica force the knockout game or will Milwaukee seal the deal? Right now it's Utica up by a pair. Here at the odd, you're watching the Ron Newman Cup playoffs on MASL TV.
fourth corner on tap here at the Adirondack Bank Center at the Utica Memorial Auditorium. 3-1 Utica. The city trying to extend their season. Beyond the 27th game of the year that they're playing right now. If Utica wins, a 15-minute knockout game would be the result to determine who advances to take on Baltimore. For Utica, it would be their first appearance in the Eastern Conference Finals for Milwaukee. They know a thing or two about deep playoff runs, most recently winning the championship in 2019. Here we go, quarter number four. Gerson kicked it back to Miatovic. And recovered back at center now by the wave. Alvarez to Ian Bennett. IB 26 off the corner boards. Miatovic was right there to receive the ball. Bradley. From Milton Keynes, United Kingdom. He had a goal and an assist the last time that these two teams met in this building. You have to go back into February to find that match, which Utica got their only victory of the season in four meetings total up till, of course, today. 7-5 was the final on February the 19th. Andrew Coughlin made 11 saves. He sucked some with the game winner. The other two meetings in the regular season went the way of Milwaukee. 9753 were the scores. And we have a challenge and a video review on tap here. Bennett getting free. A little bit of clutching and grabbing there from Correa. The wave looking to see if they can get a blue card out of this. The two head coaches, Everton Herrera, Giuliano Oliviero, know each other quite well. Of course, Everton gave a lot of his years in this game to the Milwaukee franchise as a player, so there's always a certain level of personability to this kind of a match when Everton gets to coach against his old team. Review has been denied. Ruling on the field has been confirmed, a common foul. Again, the figure that I got about a month ago from League Brass Reviews successful about 35% of the time. I don't know how much that percentage has fluctuated since then, but gives you some idea of where things were trending at the time. 3-1. Fourth quarter underway. Hoffman. Leite. Off the dribble, trying to get around Fernandez, who did a great job of recovering and forcing and influencing that pass. Salmeron shoots one high and over the bar. Don't forget to get the latest news on the MASL and your favorite teams by following MASL Soccer on Facebook and Instagram and MASL Arena on Twitter. Yelovitz denied the ball by his old teammate Ben Raymond, who has the Milwaukee goal. Asqueta. Sanchez dangling through the top end of the box around a challenge from Miatovic to Raymond. Making a bid for his second. That shot wide. Long rebound comes to Isak. Does a nice job there on the stop to get the defender sliding in behind. He didn't try to play through the ball there.
12.48 left, fourth quarter, 3-1. Utica with the first three goals of the match. And here's the high press from Milwaukee. Steinwasher across, Raymond applying pressure now. Great move from out of the back to get it across center. And that was Juan Alava doing that. The thing with Juan Alava is Everton Marrera discovering earlier this year Back heel by Bennett off the end boards, recovered by Coughlin. It was actually Cutis who made the play there at the end boards. But Everton Marrera finding out a bit about Olava's ability to play out of the back, play defense this season. So he has a bit of versatility in his game that I think adds value. He's not the biggest scorer on your team, but there's a lot that he can do. Gerson spins that back to Fernandez. Grable intervenes, deflects it to Bradley. And now cutting out the run is Fernandez. Miatovic slips off of Bradley, who heads off for a change. And boards deflected by Willie B out of his net to play it there. The shot wide by Gerson. 11-16 left in the fourth quarter. Gordy Gerson, a huge chance there. With Willie B in a somewhat compromised position. The shot went wide and Grable helped it away. Leite. Huffman one on one with Toby. Marcio. Got around Gerson. Tried to let the shot go. It was blocked by Dylan Hundo on its way to Andrew Coughlin. Huffman, Alvarez at the left point, sizing up his chances on Gordy Gerson. Alvarez switches left. The wave in need of one quickly here. Utica enjoying a 3-1 lead. Still a lot of time left in this, but the scoring opportunities haven't been overly abundant today for the wave. They've had a few. And they've definitely let a few opportunities slip away over the course of this match. And again, right now, the pressure to win and win right now is at the feet of Utica City. The Wave can survive into the mini game. Utica cannot. They have to win to get there. Soma to Swift. Soma, dangling the ball, he shoots wide. Soma playing his college soccer just a few miles away at MVCC, Mohawk Valley Community College. Osqueta from Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin to Bradley. Steinwasher from Sterling Heights, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. Bradley circles to the middle, has a pocket to shoot from. Here he does, save made by Coughlin. Miatovic, a great job to keep Bennett away from the ball. Eight twenty-three left, fourth quarter. Coughlin with a terrific save. The rebound got behind Bennett. Eight fifteen to go, fourth quarter. Three-one Utica the score.
All four goals in this game have been scored by players who have played for the Utica franchise. Three of those were given, of course, but Ben Raymond has that Milwaukee goal. Nilton thought he was going the other way, but the officials say otherwise. Leite had his pocket picked, but the whistle immediately sounds. Off the corner boards at the right foot of Derek Huffman. Working on a very tough defender to beat, Darren Toby. Two of the MASL's toughest right here going to work in the box. Nilton back to Darren Toby, chips it up to center. Removed from the top of the goal box by Toby. Correa steps in, drags that ball off of Alvarez. But now stolen by Bennett, who lets go a crispy strike over the bar and out of play with 7.09 to play in the fourth quarter. And that brings us to our media timeout. Shots for the contest, 19 to 18 in favor of Milwaukee. Up at this point, 2 nothing credited in the fourth quarter to the Wave. The advantage there. Speaking of advantages, Utica building a 3-0 advantage through the 531 mark of the third quarter. Segura and Gerson with the first half goals at 854 and 1213 of the second quarter. Segura picking up an assist. He's got another assist, by the way, on the Taylor Walter Bond goal that happened at 531 of the third quarter. So Christian Segura has had a hand in all three Utica goals today. Ben Raymond from Javier Steinwasher at 1208 of the third, breaking up. The empty score line for the Wave. And again, Utica needs to preserve this lead to force their way and force this series into the knockout game. If the Wave win, they're moving on to play Baltimore. Don't forget, you can catch MASL Monday every Monday night on Sirius XM FC Channel 157 at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Alex Bastiovansky is joined every week by special guests from across the league to recap the weekend's games and discuss the league's hot topics. That's on Sirius XM FC Channel 157 along with wherever you get your podcasts. And if you happen to disagree with any of the calls in today's game, you just might see them on the MASL's most controversial show under review. Catch it every Friday on Twitch. Co-host of that show on the field right now as the senior referee, Ryan Sigich, the head of officiating for the MASL. And for all I know, if he's not actually here, Phil Lavanco is probably close by as well as he makes his home in the area. Out of play with 6.42 left in the fourth. Top of the box for the city on that play. As the ball was knocked out of play by the defending team. Miatovic to the back post. Gerson, a great save there by Willie B. Coughlin steps up to it, unloads the bond. Gerson is open. The pass was way in front of him. Willie B recovers the ball and unloads out to Steinwasher. Knocked out of play by Miatovic from the neutral zone. Alvarez. Marcio. To Hoffman. 
Hoffman scores! 6-12 to go in the fourth quarter. Derek Hoffman with his third goal of the postseason and this series. And it's a one goal game here in the city with 6-12 left in regulation time. Leite off that handoff, give and go. And it came right back to Huffman. Miatovic just kind of losing that passing lane a little bit off the switch. And that bought time for Huffman to get there and shoot. So Derek Huffman makes it a game. 3 2, 6 11 to go, fourth quarter. It was a game to begin with, but it's a lot tighter now with the deficit cut in half. Soma to Toby. The next goal in regulation will undoubtedly be massive. Understatement of the year right there. Raymond to Salmeron off the recovery. Correa out to challenge Sanchez. Bennett slips through and just shoots wide. Now pulling up to shoot Alvarez. Blocked out of play off of Bo Yelovitz. In our chat, someone mentioning on the Utica goal that it might have been Swift who ended up off his assignment. Either way, somebody didn't track on the change, and the result was a goal and an easy opportunity for Huffman to put away. That was such a well-executed give-and-go, and the defense has to be prepared. Correa fell to it, nearly handballed it there as Alvarez plays it back. Bennett slides it into the left wing corner. Hard collision along the near board. Swift puts out the hip check. The wave with an opportunity in the attacking third. They trail by one. Three to two. Buckle those seatbelts. We're headed for a great finish here. Leite. Doesn't try to do anything direct. Will take it himself and scores. Marcio Leite. It's all tied up at three. Leite's eighth point of the series. He had an assist on the Hoffman goal and now gets one himself. He had six points in game one. That's his third goal of the series. We are all tied up at three. Four, 12 left. The Wave rallying out of an 0-3 hole. Marcio Leite with a terrific goal to tie the game. Long shot, Miatovic wide. Grable up in the high press. Nilton needs to be ready for that. It got knocked free over to Sanchez. The battle continues along the far boards. Nilton is there. Open is Bond. He shoots wide. And Grable steps in to clean up. Great recovery by Nilton to keep the play flowing. 3-3. Shot high. 
on the part of Alex Sanchez from Chicago, Illinois. Fernandez to Toby. Toby diagonally forward to the rookie Fernandez. Bradley is challenging him. Bennett up to press on Alava. Give and go. Fernandez in behind his man. Good help defense by Luan here for the wave. Diagonal seam pass finds Gerson, and he can't volley one on goal. Two thirty-six left regulation. Salmaron, left wing, wall score set up back heel from Bennett. Coughlin able to step in front of it. That's a highlight reel finish if it goes in. Andrew Coughlin coming up with a colossal save. And that keeps us tied at three. Correa with the cross. That one had a lot of side spin on it. Hooked to the left as it went out of play. Really deep hook there on that cross corner dump in, but possession has been conceded to Milwaukee. Game two of the series. Utica must find a way to win this. In order to preserve their playoff life and head into the knockout game. Milwaukee, they win, they're through. Correa to the right. Segura scores! Here he comes to save the day. They call him Mighty Mouse. And Christian Segura may have just saved Utica's playoff life yet with 1.33 remaining. We would have went to overtime in a 3-3 gridlock. But for Utica, a 4-3 go-ahead goal could be seismic for their chances to get into that knockout game. He may be little at 5'5", 149 pounds. But my gosh, is he fierce. And he's come up clutch multiple times in these playoffs for Utica. And Segura has outperformed every Utica's fan's wildest dreams for the most part over his three-season tenure with the team. Had an amazing first year with the team. And here he is coming up with huge goals in the postseason. A 4-3 go-ahead with 1.33 left. His second of this match, he has had a hand in all four Utica goals today. And he had the hat trick and overtime winner on this turf against Kansas City. If you're keeping score at home, Segura now has eight points in these playoffs. Four to three. One thirty-three left in regulation of game two. Segura with arguably the biggest goal yet of his Utica tenure. Shot taken by Leite, deflected out of play. And remember, this is a guy who made an impression from the get-go. He had that unbelievable neutral zone chip 
in his home debut. That was played thousands of times over online. Leite and boards. It rattles into the hands of Coughlin off of Darren Toby. One eleven left. Regulation time. 4-3. The Milwaukee Wave are trailing by one. Extra attacker is on. Long attempt. Coughlin made the save. Hoffman steps into the middle. Plays it off the boards. Looking for Bennett. Soma there with the pressure, but then it's helped back by Bradley. The extra attacker is Mario Alvarez. Off the end boards are recovered by Coughlin. Timeout Utica. Four three, the city in front. A huge goal from Christian Segura, who is having a huge match. Two goals, two assists. For the man who hails from Hermosillo, Mexico. If you're just joining us, this has been a battle. It was an early struggle in the first quarter. Both teams with 16 shots combined. Neither team was able to score. Utica scoring twice in the second quarter. Segura and Gerson to get up 2-0 at the break. Segura set up Bond at 5.31 of the third quarter for a 3-0 lead. But Milwaukee has come roaring back with three in a row, Raymond, Hoffman, and then Lente between the third and fourth quarters to tie the game, but it's Christian Segura from Cesar Correa. Correa with his second point of the series on the assist there at 13-25, and Utica finds themselves ahead 4-3. to three. Four seconds left. Number 17, Tim Goldman banging the drum here to get the fans into it. Yelovitz to Bond. Steps in front of the lava. 22 seconds left. Can Utica force this into the knockout game? Bradley upended. Free kick awarded to the Wave. Ten seconds left, Leite. Sliding challenge to flex the ball from Hundelt. He tried to clear the zone, Alvarez held it in. Bradley tries to knife one into the box. Deflected wide by Bennett. We're going to the knockout game. Four, three, the final of game two. The late go ahead by Christian Segura. Breaks the 3-3 three, three tie, Utica holds it to the buzzer. Series tied at one. 15 minute non-golden goal knockout game coming up. We will step away and get ready for that here on MASL TV. 4-3, the final score of game two. And I should note as well before I step away, these teams, if they would like to, can make lineup changes, and Utica has a couple players warming up. Logan Roberts and Alex Gomez are getting ready here to possibly come into the lineup for game two. So I did want to make that point of clarification before we hit the break. Four, three, the score. That's your final of game two. It will be reset to 0-0 for our knockout game coming soon.
What's your story? What moments make life an adventure? Community is where memories happen. At Bank of Utica, enriching our community for current and future generations has been part of our mission since 1927. By supporting local, community-focused organizations, we work together to open doors to education, the arts, and meaningful career paths. Making stories to remember. Bank with Utica. Spend your weekend brunching at Babes every Saturday and Sunday, now from 8 a.m. Yes, 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. The only place to be is Babes for Brunch. Featuring our famous sticky bun pancakes, and did we mention $10 endless mimosas all brunch long? What more could you want in your weekend? See you at Babes, open seven days a week on 80 North Genesee Street in Utica. When it comes to investing, looking from a fresh perspective can make all the difference. It can provide what we call an unlock a realization that often reveals a better path forward. At Wells Fargo, it's our expertise in finding this kind of insight that has led us to become one of the largest investment and wealth management firms in the country. Discover how we can help find your unlock. From couch to car and couch again, Cookies Q is your one-stop shop for dinner and dessert. Just give us a call, let us know you're ordering to go, and we'll have your meal ready for you hot and fresh. Eat like a boss and try our famous Boss Burger, or try one of our juicy chicken sandwiches. We've got combos, kids' meals, and more. Did we mention we've got ice cream seven days a week, all year round? And if you're feeling extra lazy, Cookies is available on DoorDash and Grubhub. Cookies Q and Creamery, open seven days a week on North Genesee Street in Utica. ClickOnSupplies.com has no shortage of supplies for your home or office needs. From furniture to post-it notes, ClickOnSupplies.com is always stocked with over 45,000 items, and shipping is always free. ClickOnSupplies.com is an enterprise of CabV. Your purchases help provide services and create jobs for people who are blind or visually impaired. Create your free account today and save 10% on your first order. Use code WELCOME10 at ClickOnSupplies.com. Warm up at Stewart Shops. From hot coffee to soups, hot entrees, and cheeseburgers, Stewart Shops is a great place for a quick bite that will warm you up and satisfy your cravings this time of year. You'll find more choices than most fast food restaurants, like the delicious meatballs, the crispy chicken sandwich, chicken tenders, and the endless combinations of make-your-own hot dogs with free meat sauce. You're in and back on the road in no time with a hearty meal that will keep you going all day. Warm up at Stewart Shops with great easy food. It's here, the only robotic GPS in a state outside of New York City. The Excelsius GPS. No need to travel to the big cities. The best technology is right here at Central New York Brain and Spine Neurosurgery. The Excelsius GPS provides a safer and more precise surgery with better outcomes for you. Improved accuracy, less time under anesthesia, and incisions are reduced to only millimeters. For world-class care and the latest technology, call Central New York Brain and Spine Neurosurgery, where Dr. Q cares about you. At Don's Ford of Utica, choose from nearly 300 quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Many are still under factory warranty or come with our 60-day, 3,000-mile comprehensive used vehicle warranty. We even put a royal shield on value autos. Don's Ford is home to the $249 or less payment, so you can get into a great pre-owned vehicle priced at just $249 a month with $249 down. You'll find great financing options and we'll even buy your car. Find its value with just three easy steps. Only at Don's Ford of Utica. Banking is an important part of our everyday lives. But at Bank of Utica, it's not the same old story. We make sure you never get the runaround. When you call, you speak with a real person from your community 
with experience and the personal knowledge of you and your account. We make the time for you so you can make time for everything else. Making time for your story. Bank with Utica. The opportunities and the experiences that a student gets at Herkimer College really sets them up for future success. They have given me the skill set I need in order to be successful. There's like so many amazing professors. They're helping me a lot. Classrooms are small, a lot of interaction. We are one of the top community colleges in the nation. We are smart. Focused. Vibrant. Connected. Diverse. Supportive. Welcoming. Affordable. We are Herkimer College. DEA Building Supplies is a local warehouse filled with all the home supplies you need. Doors, counters, sinks, windows, and more. Whether you're trying to match the classic decor of your home or looking for the next thing in modern design, we have it all. Stop in or give us a call today. The rigorous curriculum at Notre Dame prepared me for my undergraduate years at Colgate University as well as my three years at Syracuse University College of Law. At Notre Dame, I participated uh, in NJROTC program. As a member of the NJROTC program in campus ministry, they instilled in us uh, the values uh, for community service and I've utilized those throughout the rest of my life. El zapatazo, así ah, pégale, 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 pégale. ¡Ay! ¡Ay! ¡No! 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 ¿Qué pasó, señores? ¡Ay, ay, ay! Esto se va a quedar grabado. Love Grove, cross. Shots blocked. Pereira has the open look. He gives that a ride. Is this number 14? Here comes Brown. Oh, what a stop from Cameron Brown. All the way Here down to Cameron Brown. Cameron Brown! Cameron Brown! And Walton is good. Blockering that away, but Cameron Brown, what a fantastic run. Had 38 block shots in that game. Miatovic with a header! Hugo with a big save. That's his best. Great reaction by Hugo Silva as he's able to react to the header by Miatovic. Here comes Harrisburg. It is Deprima down the left side. Here's a shot correction. That is uh, Chavez who was down there. No, a shot. And a save by Neto. Holy cow. Facial, huh? Yeah. Huffman. Sets it up, Bradley Hill, T1 up, shot, save! Wow, that was Paulo's best save of the day right there on Alex Bradley. Ray Lee with a couple of good moves. Off the boards, ball is loose out front! Vosvik gets it, Mads! Oh boy, what, what a save by Vosvik. Now Barry, trying to work against Alvarez, comes in, shot, save, will he be? Grable clears it off the line, rebound headed down! Getting that win, getting that just one win. Oh, there is a, a header by Reggett. And a great save, too. So, good entry pass into Reggett. This kid, Glorioso, yep. where'd he come from? He looks great. Spend your weekend brunching at Babes every Saturday and Sunday, now from 8 a.m. Yes, 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. The only place to be is Babes for brunch, featuring our famous sticky bun pancakes. And did we mention $10 endless mimosas all brunch long? What more could you want in your weekend? See you at Babes, open seven days a week on 80 North Genesee Street in Utica. When it comes to investing, looking from a fresh perspective can make all the difference. It can provide what we call an unlock a realization that often reveals a better path forward. At Wells Fargo, it's our expertise in finding this kind of insight that has led us to become one of the largest investment and wealth management firms in the country. Discover how we can help find your unlock.
From couch to car and couch again, Cookies Q is your one stop shop for dinner and dessert. Just give us a call, let us know you're ordering to go, and we'll have your meal ready for you hot and fresh. Eat like a boss and try our famous Boss Burger, or try one of our juicy chicken sandwiches. We've got combos, kids' meals, and more. Did we mention we've got ice cream seven days a week, all year round? And if you're feeling extra lazy, Cookies is available on DoorDash and Grubhub. Cookies Q and Creamery, open seven days a week on North Genesee Street in Utica. Welcome back inside the Adirondack Bank Center at the Utica Memorial Auditorium. The score has been reset to 0-0. Utica winning game two. And that brings the knockout game onto the table. The final score of game two was 4-3. And now Utica City and Milwaukee go into this knockout game with the series tied one game apiece. Again, 15-minute period, no golden goal. Whoever is ahead at the end of the 15 minutes is declared the series winner and advances to the Eastern Conference Finals to take on Baltimore. If the two teams are tied, then they would proceed into uh, golden goal overtime to determine who would move on. So Utica winning by a 4-3 score. They scored the first three goals of that game. Segura, Gerson, and Bond. Segura with a goal and two assists over that span, putting Utica in front at 531 of the third quarter. Milwaukee would score the next three. Raymond, Huffman, and Leite across the third and fourth quarters, but it was Christian Segura from Cesar Correa who was able to punch home the decisive tally and send us in to this knockout game. Hope you're having a great time. Hope you've had a wonderful 15 minutes or so to recollect yourself. Calm the nerves a little bit. Do whatever you got to do. Get some food. And we'll see how this all shakes out. This will be the second knockout game played in this building in MASL playoff history. Utica was defeated in the knockout game in the 2019 playoffs against Baltimore. So for Utica, a win here would be their first knockout game victory and also their first appearance in the conference finals. Milwaukee, meanwhile, trying to get back to where they've become accustomed to being. Only lineup change that I have had forwarded to me, by the way, that's another thing with this knockout game procedure. Teams can change their lineup, as I said, heading into the break. Utica brings on Rafa Godoy. Milwaukee makes no changes that I know of to their lineup. And while we have an opportunity, a question from our uh, Twitch, tw Twitch audience here. Buster Boo Boo 113 asks, Ray, what's your favorite Utica food? Well, the answer to that question is chicken riggings. It's a pasta dish, tomato and cream sauce. It's spicy if you aren't really familiar with that. I know there's a lot of Milwaukee folks out there who probably appreciate that explanation. 
Really, really good stuff. And on the counter side of that, you know what? I love going to Wisconsin. Especially driving through the countryside. I'll stop at every farmstead cheese place I can find. And it's no secret, actually, a few years ago, I was out in Minnesota for the NCAA Division III Men's Ice Hockey Championships that were held in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, but I spent some time in Minnesota as well. I stopped at a bunch of places between Milwaukee and Minneapolis. And I went home with a suitcase, a carry-on full of cheese. Suffice to say, the airport security folks were very confused. Anyway, let's do it. Over into the knockout game we go. Alvarez. Knockout game, 15 minutes. Willie B. Launched it up the left side. Bennett. On the move. Shot. Removed in front of the line by Miatovic. Alvarez is ready. Has the ball at his feet. Miatovic left corner. Bond had it deflected high in the air. Grable heads it along towards the benches with 13.51. Left in this knockout game period. Back heel from Huffman to Leite. Leite steps middle. It skips by Huffman. Luan in the corner. He heads it back to the point. Salmeron lets one fly. Coughlin stretches up and makes a strong save. Mr. Stretch at his best. Andrew Coughlin with a terrific save on Alan Samaroff. Restart pass, leaks throw. Hoffman had it blocked by Bond. Zero, zero here in the knockout game. Hoffman, after this ball that's currently at the feet of Toby, Hundelt plays it to Coughlin. Carefully forward to Bo. Give and go from Miatovic. And out at center, here comes Utica on the rush. Nilton DeAndrade taken off the ball by Bennett. Hope you enjoyed that 15 minute rest period, everyone. Because we're getting right back into full steam ahead. Restart for the city. Shot taken by Bond is blocked. Osqueto lets it go for Grable. They were looking for a Lawal that was redirected back forward by Segura, who had a huge match. A four point outing and a 4 3 win. Shot! Score! Steven Fernandez! Utica in front to start off the knockout game. Two minutes and 16 seconds in, it's Steven Fernandez with his first MASL playoff goal. And it comes at a colossal time for the home side. Out of Rago Park, New York, the six foot forward at 16 points in the regular season. He has been a huge contributor in getting Utica to this point in just his rookie season in the league. 
Leite, left wing side. Entered into the middle, that's trapped between the feet of Toby. Unloads it, gets it away from Huffman, but hold on, it might be coming back, and it is. Knocked out game, 12-24 left. one nothing Utica. Leading the wave of Milwaukee. Free kick, Leite to the corner, Huffman redirected away. Twelve nineteen left in the knockout game. Let's get another look at this. Leite, Huffman right to the shin of Coughlin. Alvarez, right side, shot taken by Luan. He misses it wide. Leite backing up the play to create a scrum. Kicking at it is Correa. Gerson's in there as well, along with Bennett. I will take a moment, extend my apologies to everybody in the Twitch chat that is now hungry for a nice slice of cheese. I'm always up for some uh, Wisconsin cheddar, that's for sure. Lawal dangling through the middle. Set up by Asquita. No, says Stefan Miatovic. He dives and blocks. Eleven forty-nine left in the knockout game. One nothing City. Quick restart. Whistle sounds as it was let go. Leite at the third line will get another shot at it here. Swung out to the right, pass to the corner. Bradley looking for the run. Luan was coming in. He collides with Coughlin. Corner restart coming up for the wave. Quickly to Bennett, they score. IB26 ties it up at one. With 11.42 left in the knockout game. First goal of the series for Bennett. And it comes at a whopping time. And it's worth noting, that is his 500th point in the current generation MASL between the regular season and playoffs. Five oh one. if you want to include a point in an All-Star game that is on the playoff ledger for him in the league stats right now. So, no doubt, congrats to Ian. Continuing to have an exceptional career, and he's got the ball at his feet right now after tying the knockout game. Miatovic to Nilton. Lost the ball to Salmaron. Raymond steps in. Now to Bradley, or rather Huffman. Here's Huffman slipping through. Down the middle. Asquenta scores! In the words of the great Ron Burgundy, that has escalated quickly. The Milwaukee Wave down one nothing, now lead two to one. Asquenta on the rush. Netting his first goal of the playoffs. That's his first career playoff goal in the MASL for the rookie who spent four seasons with UW-Milwaukee. So a 2-1 score, under 11 to play in the knockout game. Correa, headed by Yelovitz into an open pocket. Segura will get there first. 
But he's got a double team right on him. Alvarez played it up. Ten thirty nine left. Deflected off of Leite. Elevitz put it out of play. So it's 2 1 Milwaukee here in the knockout game. Off the penalty bench, here's Toby. Yelovitz, right wing side. Tries to take his man off the dribble, holds up. Swung back to Segura. Soma, towards the goal box, shoots from distance, deflected away by Willie B. Yelovitz. Miatovic, Segura. Correa, off the end boards looking for the run. That was knocked out of the box. 9.58 left in the knockout game. It's 2-1 to one wave. No more series advantage. It is purely all to play for now. Samarong across to Hoffman. Miatovic up to challenge Bennett. Bennett holds the ball. Osqueta under a lot of pressure here from Rafa Godoy who checked into the lineup. He helps manufacture the turnover. Godoy down the right side. Slid it through. Bordeaux was way behind it. With 9.02 left. And now out to Bennett. Left wing side. Shoots it wide. Coughlin. A little bobble of the rebound, but he finally gets back on it. Thrown out to midfield. Alava. 2-1 wave, 8.41 left in the knockout game. Headed by Yelovitz. Chasing after it, Gerson. Beating him to it here is Luan. He overheads it. Held into the box here by Bordeaux. A battle on the right side of the box. Down goes Gerson on the collision there. Lots of shouting and finger pointing right now. As Gerson is up in a seated position. Ryan Sigic calling for the trainer, or it seemed for a second. By the way, new game means new challenges. And Everton Marrera has his flag on the carpet now. So here comes the review. Everton having an audience with one of the officials. And here they come to the monitor. So we are under video review. Challenge granted for the knockout game. Willie B just coming in from behind Gerson there. There was some contact. With 8.15 left in the knockout game. Fans in the chat, what do you think?
as Gerson went in to play the header. And you just see Willie B make that quick step over. There was some contact. The question is, is it definitive enough to warrant anything further? And the answer is no. Ryan Sigic, our MASL official, saying that the call on the field will be upheld. Leite will restart play here for Milwaukee. Eight fifteen left in this knockout game. Utica finds themselves down by a goal. Steinwasher taken away. Fernandez. Nilton up to Gerson, left wing side. To the goal box. Willie B dives out to turn away. Gerson off the crossbar on the follow up chance. Game of inches to be sure for Nilton DeAndrade. And it will be an officials initiated review. Just to, I assume, confirm that that ball did not cross the goal line. Better to have a look than not in that kind of situation for sure. And the officials have initiated this review. And it indeed stayed out. That's pretty black and white. That's an easy call. The question is, other than that, are they looking to see if... Love to see where Willie touches the ball, and the answer is in the box by that angle. So that would be the other thing that I think would even be on the minds of the officials. Two one seven forty two left in the knockout game. And nothing to see here. We play on. Five aside, they were looking at a goal line review. Or at least that's what T PA announcer Tim Best just announced. Seven thirty seven left, knockout game. Long entry pass down to Gordy Gerson, ball at his feet. Miatovic shoots, blocked away into the stands. Two one wave. Seven twenty five left. Free kick for Gerson. He's directly behind it. Gerson up to the ball. Off the end boards. Cleared away by Osqueta. Now with 7.19 left in the knockout game. Free kick coming for the City. And it will be way up front. Advanced position here for this chance. Top of the box. Restart. And there's the run up and the timeout called. Which in a high stakes situation like this, that's to be expected. Two on here in this knockout game. After a 4-3 Utica win sent us here. Fernandez with the Utica goal at 2.15. The Milwaukee Wave overturning that deficit. Bennett and Asqueta at 3.18 in four minutes. So 42 seconds apart on the two Milwaukee goals that have given the Wave the lead 
here in this knockout game. Most of the fans here at the Odd having quite a lovely time here this afternoon. Again, this is part soccer match, part party. Always has been, always will be. Here we go out of the timeout. Segura behind it. Miatovic is to his right. Miatovic up to the wall. Backpedaled. Segura shoots. Blocked away. Chased away. Bennett on the rush. Has Steinwasher with him. Bond trying to get back in back check. And the shot was taken. Great save by Coughlin. Gerson playing centrally. Slots it back to Miatovic. Now to Segura. Back heel, Miatovic dangles left, shoots. Willie B dives and deflects the ball away. Recovered by Hundelt, who at this time last year was still a member of the Harrisburg Heat. Although technically, I guess you could say his contract had expired at the end of the season. That said, he ends up in a Utica uniform and he's contributed well. Salmaron, down he goes. Will play on. Gerson from distance. Will he be with the diving stop? 2 1, 6 0 8 left in the knockout game. Steinwasher off balance, gets it to Sanchez. He sprays one wide. Gerson down in the corner. Hoffman, very animated reaction. With 5.55 left in the knockout game. Toby. Across to Coughlin, now to Yelovitz, just inside the Milwaukee third, and... They'll be bringing this one back. Leite. To his right, pressure came in from Hundelt. Bradley to Luan. 5.36 left in the knockout game. Shot taken wide for Luan Oliveira. Loose, Bennett, Coughlin with a huge save. One of his biggest of the year right there, right now. Toby circles away. Now to Isak. And Stefan Miatovic, center of his own third line. Looking downfield for the target bond. It was deflected to Soma. He stepped over the ball. 4.53 left in this knockout game. Long entry pass. Olava deflects it. Keeps it away from Cutis Lawal. Sent forward towards Bond. Intervening is Alvarez. 428 left. Alvarez. Sanchez circles middle. Has a pocket, still with the ball. And Nilton finally gets in front of him to take it away. Entered in, top end of the box. Steinwasher, still there. A lot of contact, but Utica will come away with it and counter. Nilton 
to a wide open Soma. And Willie B accounts for that. Giuliano Oliviero, the head coach of the Wave, urging Willie B to call timeout, which he does with 3.49 left in this knockout game. Again, second knockout game in Utica City FC history. You got to go back to 2019 to find the first one. Will Utica have a better memory of this one? They have to find a way to square this game up with 3.49 remaining. And so often, they've come through in the clutch. You go back to a lot of these stretch run games that Utica won after January the 29th. Three forty nine left. The ball handed to Willie B for the distribution. Hoffman sweeps it across. Nilton steps in. Godoy shoots wide. Geometrically across. Bonahene makes the save. On Cesar Correa, Bo Yelovitz was on the doorstep, but couldn't lift it over him. 3.18 left. Stolen by Nilton DeAndrade. Bo Yelovitz leaning on Grable down the middle. Rafa Godoy tries to shoot, blocked away. Battle in the box, Godoy with the extra pass. Hands it off for Hundell. Back to the point, Godoy. And now Godoy and Cutis Lawal having a quick word. As there is a player down back behind the play at the other end. I believe that's Steph Miatovic. And the trainer's out to have a look at him now. 2-1 wave in this knockout game. All on the line now with 2.52 left. And he's been helped up to his feet. Good sign. Very slowly on his way to the bench here, but... At least he's on his feet, which is, of course, sign number one in a spot like this. Does Utica go extra attacker here? They will. Time to go for Broke with a 2-1 score, 2.52 left.
And the officials to the table. Extra attacker is on for the city. It's Christian Segura. Didn't appear to be a replay review. The monitor has stayed flat on the table. I think there's just a logistics question. Two fifty-two left in the knockout game. Can Utica pull this even? Or are the Wave on their way? Either way, it's been an unbelievable ride up to this point. Hundel. Bojelovic to the corner. Gerson entry pass was knocked away by Grable. Bojelovic back to the ball. Steinwasher watching him. Segura headed by Hundel. Header played by Leite. Yelovitz, Segura. Yelovitz was directing traffic, the co-captain. Two minutes to play. Yelovitz to the corner. Here's Toby. Hasn't scored a lot, but when he has, he's come up in some big spots here. His first goal this season was an equalizer. Neutral zone, sixth attacker, Segura hustles it down. Hundel, Segura, 126 left. Bo Yelovitz, right wing corner to Toby. Hundel, left wing. Yelovitz being watched by Steinwasher. Unload Segura back to Hundel. 103 left. Good crossing pass. Bo Yelovitz. Makes not one but two switchovers on Leite before the ball got deflected to the boards. Loose ball. Toby poking at it. As was Grable for Milwaukee. 50.2 left. Timeout called by Marcio Leite in the wave. Unbelievable effort for Utica just to get to this point in the knockout game. Takes a lot out of you when you're chasing the series to bring it even. Because you have to fight like there's no tomorrow. Utica did that to a T. In the second game. But as far as this season is concerned, a lot of the memory of this season will be defined by the next 50.2 seconds. Utica trying to get into new ground. At the tail end of what's been a really, really exciting year, the way that Everton Marrera has elevated this franchise. And there were some bumps in the road in the first half of the year. Utica was 3-7 at the start of the season. 11-4-1 they closed on that kind of a run to get the 13-10-1 and, and get that fourth seed in the playoffs. Towering clearance. Coughlin is back between the pipes as Bennett recovers the ball. 
Tobin, Bond, timeout Utica. Andrew Coffin with the ball at his feet. He'll make the call here for Utica with 28.6 left. Knockout game, 2-1, and it's all about the next 28 seconds. The winner will face Baltimore. In a similarly formatted series, in fact, identically formatted. Home and home with the knockout game if it is required. But actually, it may not be a home and home at all. Because the possibility exists that whatever team wins this will host both games against Baltimore, from what I understand, as part of a building availability thing. So we'll see. That is within the realm of possibility. I know a few people in the chat have mentioned it. That's in the realm of possibility here. We'll see who it is. Utica, 28 seconds to try to tie this game. Yelovitz, stolen by Steinwasher. Bennett looking for the empty net, wide. Segura using his goalkeeper privileges. Puts the hands on the ball inside the box. Up to Toby, right wing. Off the end boards. Bond is there, it got removed from him. Good clearance out of the box by the wave and Milwaukee will overcome the game two loss, win the knockout game 2-1 and advance. Milwaukee moving on to take on Baltimore in the conference finals. The go-ahead goal by Azqueta at four minutes is the difference and afterwards we have some scrappiness happening here. Players from both teams needing to be separated. Azqueta with the go-ahead goal and ultimately the one that decides this series in the knockout game, two to one, is your final. So for Utica City FC, what a ride it's been. Back to the playoffs for the first time in a few years. They get their first playoff advancement. And Everton Herrera really bringing this franchise to another level this season. After, of course, the COVID year, a rough season last year as well. And who knows what, what would happen in the 1920 season. The team was pretty good at that point. But for sure, I think when you as, uh, when you really evaluate this season, the end crowns the work for the city, for sure. I think that the progress in this franchise, where they're at right now, it's evident. It's clear that the direction for the future is bright. There's a lot to look forward to. If you happen to be here in the Handshake City as part of this great fan base, and for Milwaukee, a lot to look forward to in the near future as they will play the Baltimore Blast in the Eastern Conference Finals. Congratulations to Utica City FC for a wonderful season. Congratulations to Milwaukee moving on to the next round. For our entire crew, including Eric Kawaiatek in the control room, Doug Moreau, a whole bunch of other people that I'm sure I'd leave somebody out if I had to go down the entire list. Our GM, Tommy Tanner, owner, Rob Esch, everyone involved here at the Adirondack Bank Center at the Utica Memorial Auditorium and this franchise. This is Ray Biggs saying so long, goodbye. It has been a pleasure. 
and we'll see you next year. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. So long.